With rising fuel prices, are you finding yourself camping less because of the cost to actually tow the trailer to and from a location? Well, maybe now's a good time to have a conversation about taking a seasonal site at a local campground, and we're going to share some of the pros and cons with you in this episode of Travels with Delaney, the podcast. Hey, everyone. My name is Patrick. And I'm Patty. And we're so excited to have you join us for episode four, where we're going to be discussing seasonal camping. Another type of camping that we just enjoy tremendously. Yeah, we uh, we actually did it for, I believe, about eight summers. Yeah, I think so. And so today we're going to be talking about, you know, the pros of it versus some of the cons. Right. And um, we'll go through all of that. But first, Patty, I tell you what, I am enjoying <laughs> a very nice glass of Pinot Noir. You are. I see that. I know. <laughs> Nothing like a nice fall afternoon. Oh, perfect fall day. It's it's chilly out, it's damp, and it just seems like a good day for a glass of wine. Right. And the temperatures are just perfect. The leaves are changing. People are decorating with their pumpkins and their moms, and it's just fall. Yep. And it's also <laughs> my favorite season to camp, and I know uh-huh. it's yours as well. Absolutely. In this episode, I thought we would start a new segment called This or That, mm, where, I, where I'm going to give you a choice and and make you choose between either okay. this or that. All right. And so this week, I thought a great topic would be if you had to choose when booking a campsite, mm-hmm. you could either have electricity at your site or you could have water and sewer hookup at your site what would be your choice but you couldn't have both you could either have electricity uh-huh. with no water right. and sewer uh-huh. or you could have water and sewer but no electricity i think i go with electricity and why is that well i'm just thinking like on hot summer days um especially like um boondocking harvest hose sometimes we've been lucky enough to get electricity but we can go and our lance with our tanks, you fill them up with water. We're, we're real good at conserving water. Um, if we're out visiting a place, we don't really use the toilet in our camper very much. So I think I'd choose electricity. Okay. Yeah, I could see why. Uh-huh. I mean, now with the lance, we have a 45-gallon fresh and then a 45-gallon black and mm-hmm. gray. Mm-hmm. So you're right. If we are if we're very conservative, theoretically, we might be able to squeeze out four to five days. Yeah, we're good at that. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this. What if it was a situation where it was like Maine this summer, though, where it's really not getting mm-hmm. that hot? Which one would I do? Yeah. Would you still go with electricity? I still go with electricity. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, be, just because then it's easier to run things. Right. Like if we wanted a fan or if we needed something for the pups or if you did want to, you know, have a light, you know. You I'm know. impressed. I thought for sure you were going to go for longer <laughs> showers. I'm good at the Navy shower. Yeah. I've learned that a long time ago and I don't even take long showers in the house so i'm good at doing what i need to do quickly all right get out (laughs) so it's just something to think about i I don't know that we've ever been someplace where there was water and sewer but not electric right usually it's the other way electric only Mm -hmm. or in some of the state parks it's electric and water but no sewer but i just thought it would be a fascinating Uh question to ask is if you had to choose where would you and i again i think it just comes down to what works out i actually think we're pretty good without electricity with the lithium we can do that too yeah the blue eddies and things like that right. but um luckily we're not faced with that option right so most right. of the time mm-hmm. so yep so patty let's go ahead and dive into this week's focus which is this idea of seasonal camping yeah i remember when we bought our first camper yeah the salesman offered for us to come camp with him because we had never really camped. Nope. I had a little bit in high school. I had but you never had. camped, nothing. And <laughs> I remember he said to us, oh, yeah, I have a seasonal site at the local campground. And we were literally like, why would you do that? Yeah, we're like, what? Because <laughs> to us, when we bought the camper, we were thinking, you know, we want to go places. Yeah. And I remember him saying like, oh, it's really nice. And mm-hmm. he was telling us some of right. the benefits, which we'll talk about today. But we just thought he was crazy. We did. <laughs> and then two years later. We're doing it. <laughs> we were doing it. So, and actually, um, the way it actually started was, so we had used our little tab for two summers, basically. Right. And the s- second summer? No, it was actually, I guess, the end of the first summer. Right, right. The end of the first summer, our local Jellystone 
offered um was it like four weekends in the fall? Yeah, they, or yeah, they had like these mini packages, like uh, four weeks at the beginning of summer, four weeks at the end of the summer. And the deal was you paid for four weekends, mm-hmm. so you got like a package price, but you could leave your RV mm-hmm. on the site during the week. And so I remember we had taken, I think it was, um, if I remember right, it was like the weekend before Labor Day, Labor Day, and then two additional right. weekends. And we thought, well, you know what, that would work because that was when we were back in school teaching. Yep. And we knew we really couldn't go anywhere. And I remember we were like, this is okay. This was pretty cool because I just remember it just seemed a lot easier for weekend camping because the campers already set up. We already had, you know, all that with the camper ready to go. We just had to worry about our clothes and maybe food and medicine. Yeah, because, I mean, literally, <laughs> I remember we took it up there uh-huh. the first weekend on a Friday night. And Sunday morning, we, you know, we shut the water off. Um Lock it up. Basically locked it up. Tied, and Make sure everything is put away. And, headed home. Yeah. And then the next weekend we show up yep. with some food, our clothes, unlock it. I mean, it was great. It was nice. Yeah. And so that kind of got us thinking like, well, maybe this isn't so bad. And then the next summer we traveled. Right. And then we did the fall package again. Mm-hmm. And, and loved it again. And we loved it again <laughs> and said, you know what? We really have enjoyed traveling. But we were finding we were not really using the camper except in the summer months. Right. And we wanted to use it in the fall because right. falls around here, especially just that's when you camp. It's just so nice weather. So you want to get out and go and see the colors. Right. And, yeah. And so we began visiting local campgrounds um, to see if they had availability right. for the following year. Prices. Mm-hmm. All that. And in fact, if you remember... We actually had looked um, over at a what's now the local KOA. Back then, it wasn't a KOA; it was a private park. Mm-hmm. We had spent the weekend yes, there we did. to just try it out, and they'd given us a list of sites, and we had picked out a site. We did. We had decided we're going seasonal on site. Let's just say eighteen. And when I called on Monday morning, somebody had I already reserved it. reserved it, and we just decided, well, that was the site we really wanted. And and so we said, well, let's just wait. We'll go to the RV show in the winter. Right. And that's when we met Kevin from Collins Bay. Yep. And I don't know. We talked to him for quite a while. It just felt right. It did. We hadn't even seen the site. Nope. Um, and so we just, we said, yeah, we'll take it. And I remember we put a deposit down and we ended up being at Collins Bay up on Barton Lake for, I think at least eight years, maybe nine. I can't remember exactly. Is that when we went there in the snow and we were walking around looking at the sites? Or is that when we changed from the one site down in the one area up to the top? No, I think maybe that winter. I think we I think we went ahead and gave Kevin a check, but he told us we could pick out whatever sites were available. Okay. That, you know, And I think he said, just go up and the gate's locked, mm-hmm. but you can walk in. And I do remember walking around. Right. And, and initially we picked this corner spot. Right. Um, and I think we stayed on that site for, was it like, a month maybe maybe (laughs) and then my sister and your mom and dad mom and dad decided to bring their trailers and so we asked the owner kevin if we could find three sites together and there was a whole section up on the hill that overlooked the lake nobody was up there yeah it was perfect um and one of the reasons at the time was we were down in the lower section Mm -hmm. where there were trees which is why we picked it but up on the hill you had this gorgeous view of the lake but you had absolutely no shade none (laughs) and so we moved up there and then we stayed on that site I want to say it was site 40. Yep. Um, We were up there, like I said, for about eight years. Absolutely. And so that's kind of how we um, got into seasonal camping. I think I remember our first year um, and I wished I could tell you, I want to say this was maybe around 2007. Um, I want to say we paid $1,700 and the season at Collins Bay was from April 1st until October 31st. Right. Now there was no guarantee that you would have water at the start and the end of the season. Cause obviously if temperatures were low in the spring, they wouldn't turn it right. on. They would turn it off and turn it off, mm-hmm. but you were allowed to use your site from April one to October 31st. Correct. Um, and so it was great. We Collins Bay at the time was what, maybe 45 minutes from home, 40, 45 not minutes. Very, yeah. That's not too far. Which was also uh, a lot closer for Patty to go to work. It was a lot closer for me because at the time where we lived, we kind of lived in the middle. Right. And you would go south toward Fort Wayne. I would go north to Prairie Heights. We had about, I think I had a little bit farther drive. I think you were about 35 minutes and I was about more, 30. Yeah. But no, um, I remember I could, I had it figured out 
exactly how many minutes, but yeah, being at the lake place, as we called it, I had maybe a 20 minute ride, 25 minute ride. So it was right. Perfect. And so we would just go back and forth on the weekends mm-hmm. for the most part. But I remember after that first summer, mm-hmm. Then we ended up just kind of living up there. Yeah, we're like, why are we going? Because it was like, it was frustrating because you're having to always pack up, go home, and then come back and pack up and go home. We're like, this got to be a better way. So yeah. you're like, well, why don't we just stay the whole time up here? Right. And then we'll just check in on the house um, every now and then because you had to go by no there either, anyway. anyway to go to work. And that's what we did. Yeah. And so um, we literally, starting in year two of mm-hmm. those eight or nine years that we were seasonal, we would literally kind of move into the fifth wheel. Yep. Well, I think it was in the second year we bought the fifth wheel, yep. the third year. We would just move into the RV around the middle of April and we would not move back home to our house until the middle of October. Yeah. Right. And um, so literally we, I was just stopping by the house to mow or sometimes Patty would be like, Hey, can you, I've got a pair of shorts upstairs. Can you right. Or you would take clothes back and forth. Cause you know, you change from summer to winter and right. I need my school clothes. We even changed, had our mail. Yeah. Forwarded up oh there. yeah, we ended up getting a a, <laughs> a, a mailbox up there. But uh-huh. now, for most people, seasonal camping isn't going to afford them that right, opportunity that right. like we had. And I we do want lucky. Yeah, and I want to point that out. If you're looking at seasonal sites, one thing you want to ask the campground is, how often am I allowed to use my RV? Because again, you're going to put your RV on that site. You're going to get to leave it there the entire season. But a lot of these campgrounds have rules, and it's not uncommon where they say. In essence, you are allowed to leave your RV the whole season, but what you're actually paying for is basically weekend camping and then maybe a couple weeks in the summer. Right. That's what our friends were when they were across the at, lake. At the, at the Yellowstone yeah, or, and or Yogi so, Bear. And then they moved over to where we were over at Collins Bay and they right. got to use it whenever they wanted. Right. And yeah. so parks are different and you would want to clarify because if you're, if you're thinking like, no, I'd like to do what you guys mm-hmm. did where maybe it's close enough to home that we could just live in the RV for weeks at a time and go to work from the RV. You want to clarify that right up front with the RV park. Cause a lot of these RV parks, again, are restrictive mm-hmm. on how often you can use, even though you're seasonal and you're renting the lot for the whole year. But one of the real advantages is it is a fixed cost. Right. Um, so you, and, and I will tell you, you, you probably will not find a site as cheap as what we had. In fact, I think when we left in 20, 2015, I believe, was our last I think so. year at Collins Bay, and I think it was up to 2300 And I believe now those same sites are going for, is it 35 I maybe? think that's what our friends told us, 3500 And around here, um, we've heard the local Jellystone is up to 5000 or more. Or the KOA. Or the KOA mm-hmm. for seasonal sites. Right. But even if you only, let's say, camped during, you know, April and a lot of them now are April 15th, October 15th, but that still gives you, I think I want to say around 26 weekends, Mm -hmm. you know, there's 52 nights. And even if you take a week in the summer or two weeks in the summer, you know, from a camping standpoint, I think I was figuring up roughly at, if even if you had to pay $5,000 for the lot, Mm -hmm. you're still going to bring your, your nightly amount down to maybe $60 a night, but where the real savings comes in is you're not towing that trailer every weekend, right? And so, yeah, you're going to have a little bit of gas to get from home to your site. But most of the time, like good example, we could drive our car, get 33 miles to the gallon versus if we're hauling, we're getting 10 and a half miles to the gallon. Right. So you can definitely save on fuel, which is going to lower your cost. And the fact that you could theoretically go camping every weekend during the summer if you mm-hmm. choose to. And see where we were, you could, and we had to be approved, of course, but get a little shed. Right. Because um, we were responsible for mowing our lawn. I mean, you could have the owner's son do it, but we, you could take care right. of your own lawn, plant your flowers, make it look, you had to make it look nice, but we, we could do all that. Well, I think, and, and again, you know, I feel like sometimes seasonal campers get a bad rap because, mm. you know, we hear people in YouTube videos, for instance, say, I hate seasonal campers. The truth is it, it's not the seasonal camper that's necessarily the issue. It's the park. If the park doesn't require the seasonal campers Certain to things, keep, yeah. Yeah, keep up their sites mm-hmm. and that type of thing. So it's really on the campground itself. Um, because when we were at Collins Bay, you weren't allowed to not mow your grass. No, it had to look a certain way. You, you couldn't have, have no weeds and yeah. 
Yeah, and you couldn't have junk sitting no. around. You couldn't have multiple vehicles on your site. Or they didn't want like, you know, like refrigerators on your no. porches or your decks or whatever. I mean, when we had when we decided to get a shed, I mean, I had to get that approved. Right, and he had a certain person that he would came out mm-hmm. and yeah, he came out and, and we w- had a decided. design you could go off of and right. the materials he would have the same cuz they always they wanted to look consistently right. the same. Um and you could have a but deck. Now colors. we never built a deck because what we did was we would, even while we were seasonal, there were times in the summer where yeah. we'd say, we're going on vacation. We took it to Key West. Yeah, we'd po- go to Key West. We'd go to Disney, yep. go to Gatlinburg. Yep. And so I wanted it to be able to easily pull the truck in and pull the camper out and be able right. to put it back. So our site had a concrete patio, which was fine. Yep. So we never needed a deck. Nope. But you could build a deck. You can. That's some of the things you can do. You A lot of times you can make that lot like your own little vacation home. Your little personal oasis. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I definitely think, you know, there's there could be a money savings. Mm-hmm. Definitely from a camping fee. Because, again, boy, I tell you what, as we book campsites this year. Oh, my. Prices um, are different. <laughs> you know, normally I would have said if your average camping price was fifty dollars, I would have said that's high. Now I think if you can get away with fifty dollars for full hookups, you're a good deal. Um, now I should add, and I think this is the way it is at most campgrounds that do seasonal sites, they typically do metered electric. So right. you are responsible for your own electric bill, yeah. but your water, your sewer, and your trash is included, just like if you were a nightly camp. Sure, sure. Um but, you know, so we're saving money, we're saving fuel, maybe um, we're able to go more often just because it's easy. It's Friday it's night. We get quick. home from work. We yeah. throw some clothes in. We head to the campground and then Sunday we just lock it up and come home. And I think having not having to set up and tear down. Right. Um, All and, that. You know, Patty, this is something I hadn't thought about till just now. But, you know, we're kind of fortunate. We get to keep the RV here at we Tall Pine are Lodge. Lucky. Yeah. But. When we lived in our other house before we moved here. Right. We couldn't. We couldn't. We were in a subdivision that did not allow RVs. So then I always had the hassle of how do I get it out to the rental lot? Mm-hmm. And when do I go pick it up? To, and and so there's and another. How long can it sit up front of the house? Right. There was like a, a limit, you know, you had to move it, you know, kind yeah. of thing. So if you have that issue, there's just one more headache for you where if it's just on a seasonal site all the time easy yeah Mm -hmm. and and so i mean i think that can be another thing what would you say though of our eight years up there besides all of these factors i'm talking about i know there's something to you that was always the friends the people yeah we met so many cool people and they are still our friends and uh we're no longer see each other like we had you know but they are friends right we still connect with each other you know birthdays holidays you know, cards are on Facebook now, but we had so many fun people to hang out with. And I think that's, and and I hear this from weekend campers where they'll be like, well, we're at this campground. The seasonal people are kind of clickish. Well, and and it just happens. It's not necessarily that seasonals, um, are, are trying to be that way. Are it's trying just, to be that they're way. It's there. Just, they're <laughs> there all the time. They get to know each other. And so they do have relationships. And, and I agree. The thing I think I valued the most out of that eight or nine uh-huh. years was the friendships we had during oh, yeah. that time period. Oh yeah. Cause we get together and have like, you know, like in the fall, for example, we'd have our boiled dinners and, or we'd have potlucks. Remember the um, bingo, bingo or the fireworks, the rib roast contest, <laughs> the or rib cook off, or, or we'd make pick on each other. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> furious about the rib cook off there. There was a chef that had a seasonal site. If you're yes. right and he was the judge and the winner, when they didn't even do a rib. Mike did his ribs in a crock pot. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't you gotta put them on a grill. You can't win a rib cook off with a crock pot. <laughs> Makes me question chef credibilities. Well, it is just like we play jokes on each other. Like one yeah. of our, our good friends are Ohio State fans. And so they had a blow up of Ohio Brutus. State Brutus. But we went down and put, put a our Purdue, Purdue jersey, jersey on, on Brutus day when they were gone. Yeah. Just jokes like yeah. that. So, so I think that can be one of uh, another, mm-hmm. you know, real advantage. I know over here at our local campground, what we now consider our hometown campground, Happy Acres, they have about half their campground is seasonals, and we in just the few weekends we've camped over there, you can see that camaraderie oh, yeah. amongst the seasonals. Absolutely. They they actually put on activities themselves, uh-huh. you know, and they had the cornhole tournament, and they had like a a gal come in and sing. You know, for entertainment and yeah. stuff like that. And so I know they were doing some potlucks where right on the website mm-hmm. it says organized by our seasonal campers, but mm-hmm. everyone is welcome. And 
the other thing that we were got really lucky at our seasonal spot where when we moved we called it the top or the top of the hill and you look down over the lake there were docks and remember how we were so excited to have a boat there a pontoon yeah. we i'll <laughs> tell you what in many ways i mean there's times where i think maybe we shouldn't have gave up that site because that site was amazing it's set on the hill view of the lake we had and that price even when we were there like a 2300 was a good price that included a dock mm -hmm. and so and it was a non-ski lake you could only go 10 miles but you an could hour. take a cruise yeah, on the lake go fishing we'll go fi we had a kayak a tandem kayak hobie right. that we would use and um go fishing with nieces and nephews it was it was a like almost a totally different life right being on the seasonal site it was fun yep um, we've also done a seasonal one other time, not here in Indiana, and we actually did a uh, a lot in Florida. Yes, we did. So for two years, we actually rented a lot in Davenport, Florida yep. at Theme World RV Resort. And um, originally, and you might be wondering, like, why would you do that? <laughs> um, we did that originally because after my mom passed away, um, my sister was selling their trailer and I, I bought it and we took it to Florida, put it on a lot thinking my dad would use it. Give him some place to, to go. Yeah. And initially we used it. Um, in the summer summer we would just go down and spend several weeks in the summer we'd use it at christmas spring break mm -hmm. that type of thing now we only kept it for a couple of years because ultimately dad just wasn't using it well and it started to become a house with the upkeep and yeah the camper. well getting right. there and remember it got hit by lightning and right it's just you know it, it wasn't getting used enough to justify right. I, I think we were paying around 3200 and we were allowed to use it six months out of the year, but they didn't care when they we were used flexible it. With they us. were super nice there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we were pay paying utility bills every yeah, month mm -hmm. and just not being able to check on the camper on a regular basis. But yeah, you know, there are people who will do seasonal sites like that though, where they'll maybe take a site in yeah. the in Florida yeah. for six months or Texas, mm -hmm. and then they just leave their site or they leave their RV on there. the site mm -hmm. for the other six months. They call that a six and six. Yeah. Our friends did that. They had with us here in, in Angola, the seasonal yep. spot, and they had at um, Florida a seasonal spot. Yep. They and they actually just each. bought two trailers. They yep. bought, they traded in their motorhome, bought two older fifth wheels mm -hmm. that way. they And so they would live basically five and a half months yep. up here, close up, winter rise, head to Florida, open up the Florida trailer, stay down there till it was springtime to come back up here. Yep. And, and so if you, again, you have to look at each campground, you really have to talk to them and find out what the rules are, but there are campgrounds that will do again, what I think normally is called a six and six where you can live in it for six months straight. And then it just sits on the site for the other mm -hmm. six months. So, right. Cause a lot of these places, what they don't want to become is quote trailer parks to where people are living year round in the park right and that's why they'll limit it to six and six right but i would say let's talk about then because i think there's a lot of reasons like i'm almost talking myself into a I seasonal know. site um <laughs> but let's talk about maybe some of the reasons why a person wouldn't want to do a seasonal site well you just don't have i guess that adventure of going places or trying different things you kind of get in a rut right so you don't get to you don't have that urge to go you just, and, and it's not that you can't, because again, most mm -hmm. of the time, again, I would you verify up front, but ask, do you have a problem if we periodically we pull our trailer mm -hmm. out to go? I think the problem you get into is if you're plopping down thirty five hundred to five thousand right. dollars, then you start saying like, oh, now we're going to pull out and spend another mm -hmm. X amount yep. to go camping someplace else. And so that might be a reason where you say, no, we really still like, even if we only get out six to eight times over the course of the right. year but at least we're getting to go to michigan and ohio and kentucky right and, you know Absolutely. maybe different locations yeah, go different places you yeah, actually go <laughs> yeah. i think that would probably be yeah the, i think the, that'd be the down the, the, the really down you get kind of just stuck like you get comfortable i guess yeah you don't feel like going but otherwise and maybe the cost because again sure. some of these campgrounds the seasonal sites have really went up right the other thing that I think we're seeing a trend right now in, in the campground industry is it appears a lot of these campgrounds are reducing the number of sites that they're allocating for seasonals. Yeah. Um, we know, we know that. Yeah. We know, we know of campgrounds where they're doing that. They're either doing it by when somebody says we've decided we're not going to renew our seasonal lease. They just don't put that site back into the seasonal pool. They put it into the weekend pool. Yep. Or, um, you know, we've heard of some campgrounds where they've just told their seasonals there will be no seasonal sites next right. year. And the reason for that is with the increased sales of RVs, a lot more people are traveling. Mm -hmm. And there's actually, from a campground standpoint, this is kind of where you get into the business of it. And I'm not sure how many people really care about the business side of it. But 
the great thing about a seasonal site, if you're a campground owner, is if I say our lots are $4,000 for the year, every person that writes that check to me, I get $4,000 right up front in the bank. Mm -hmm. It's guaranteed revenue. I don't have to worry about reservation. I don't have to check you in, check you out. Um, And so you might think from a campground standpoint, you'd love seasonals. But I think, isn't right now, they're maybe making more money on the weekend. They are. That's the thing because the it's hard, you know, campgrounds are filling up and so they're able to raise their rates. So even if they're not a hundred percent full seven days a week, they may be better off being 75% full, but getting 80, 90. I mean, some of these rates that I'm seeing for campgrounds is crazy. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, as one uh, uh, park told me is the seasonal people they bring in their own food. They bring yep. in their own firewood. They bring in their own ice. They're not going to the little camp store to buy the food, the ice, the marshmallows, the right. s'more kits. And there's money to be made the in that ice camp cream store. And the, yeah, the, the, the souvenirs and stuff like that. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of our take on it. Like uh-huh. I said, we had a very positive it was a experience. Great experience. And, and I will tell you this, if you're a weekend camper and you're one of those that go, oh, I hate those seasonal people. Trust me for every weekender <laughs> that says they hate seasonals, every there's seasonal. hates the weekenders yep. because their view is, hey, these weekenders show up and act like they own the place. We're the ones here all the time. Uh-huh. And uh, so, I, you know what, let's just all get along and have a good time. <laughs> that's camping, right. right. Yep. That's what it's for. Having peace. All right, Patty. Each week, we like to provide our podcast listeners with what we call a Delaney Pro Tip. That's right. Something we've learned Mm -hmm. along the way and maybe will help others out. And this week, I think you've got a great tip for people. Well, it's going to be a duffel bag. Duffel bag. How is a duffel bag a (laughs) pro tip? Like, um, especially now that I'm a weekender because we're back in school. And we do have the advantage of having our camper right out the back door. But when we didn't, before I did this too, and I still do it now, I'll get a duffel bag out and I'll put the, start putting things in it early in the week when I'm packing. And then I'll just right now take the duffel bag out and just, you know, put the stuff in the camper. But before I had everything in my duffel bag, go to the campsite and my stuff's there. I don't have to, you know, try to always, you know, carry it and worry about it. And do I have everything? I just put it all in the duffel bag. And that's yeah. my way of carrying it to the camper. So, and I think that could be a great tip for somebody that doesn't have the luxury of having their right. RV right at their house. Because I remember doing that with our other camper. I right. just put everything. You'd have your duffel bag. I'd have mine. We'd pack it up with what we needed. You know, and then we'd make sure we have our medicine. And you know, if I had makeup or, but we, you know, we just try to have things that we just sneak. Because you know, in the camper we had stuff like doubles, right. like you know, double like toothpaste and double toothbrushes so we didn't have to worry about packing those things um and hair things like i always have you know my i've learned even this year because uh i need a purple shampoo um but i have an extra purple shampoo that i pack in the camper i think that barney shampoo is actually for little kids <laughs> but uh it's because of the platinum hair babe okay. gotta keep it white but uh but anyway so i just have my duffel bag and i can just easily have it in my closet and put stuff in there that i need and then because i'm working and then when it comes you know time to go on friday or thursday night i got it and i'm ready to go it's easy for me to, to, to put everything in there that way i know i don't miss something that's a great tip <laughs> i think that's a real good tip <laughs> All right, Patty, this has been an outstanding episode, kind of reliving um, some yeah, good memories like for us. Like you, I'm thinking, oh, that was fun. Why did we give it up? Yeah. yeah, we're so close to that seasonal spot, and we got a beautiful spot here in the cabin, but yeah. it was it was a fun time. It wouldn't be the same if we went back, as no. you know. Nope, so never is. You can never recreate what you had, so... So anyway, hopefully this will at least give you all something to think about, about the way you travel. And could this be something you might be interested in? And Patty, as always, I I, I would be remiss if we did not think the man behind this yes, podcast Jim. that keeps us on track, yes. Mr. Jim Kuzman, our friend and Thank producer. You, Thank you, Jim, for all that you do. Um, if you're enjoying our podcast and the 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 quality audio levels that Jim puts out. Um, Absolutely. He's you can, great. You can thank Jim for that because yeah. it's definitely not us. So. No. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for stopping by for another episode of Travels with Delaney, the podcast. Uh, we hope you uh, stay safe out there. And until next time, we'll see you. On down the road. Good night. Bye-bye.